What's going on, American truckers? Welcome to Trucking with Old Snapper. And this is the voice of Old Snapper. I am currently in Ocala, Florida, getting loaded. Going to Texas. Got a Walmart load out to Texas. This is what I'm up to. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe and all that fun stuff that YouTubers say. Uh, ain't really a whole lot of nothing going on in my life. Uh, they, they gave me a door right next to their stairs. That's about the most excitement I've had this morning. Like, uh, I, don't, I don't know if y'all have ever been to these places where it's just the doors are real close together. And these stairs that go up into this uh, door that goes up into the warehouse, it's like right there. So my literally, as I backed into it, my, my doors open was maybe uh, two inches off of them, off of them stairs making me kind of nervous. I don't like getting that close to anything. But anyway, I want to talk about a couple different things in this video. Uh, one of the things we're going to talk about is driver facing cameras. And then later on in this video, we're going to get into talking about another trucking YouTuber who's pretty cool, uh, Bobby Reach. Some of y'all may know who he is. If you don't, you're way behind in the times. You should know who he is because he's pretty, pretty popular. I think he's got 25,000 subs, but he, he's a pretty popular cat. He gets some huge lives going. But uh, anyway, let's start with these cameras. I see a, I see a few companies have gone to them over the years. Uh, Stevens Transport's gone to driver-facing cameras. I think uh, Sigma or one of them local food, food delivery uh, trucking companies has driver-facing cameras. Um, there's, you know, there, there's a few of them around the country. A lot of companies have outward facing cameras, but there's a few that also have driver facing cameras. You know, and they, they kind of feed the uh, drivers this myth. I wouldn't call it a myth. It's probably a half myth, half truth. They feed these drivers these stories. They tell them, well, the driver facing camera we have because it promotes good behavior. It don't promote good behavior. Right? You know, because guys still get caught on their phones. Guys still do all that dumb, dumb crap they're not supposed to do, right? You know, whether that camera is there or not. They just do it in hopes that uh, the camera doesn't go off, you know. Now, here's, here's the other thing. You know, they tell you that the camera is not always recording or, you know, they explain it different ways. But that camera is always recording 24-7, all right? And they kind of contradict themselves when they tell you how it works. Because when they tell you how it works, they say in the case of an event, it's going to send so many seconds before the event and so many seconds after the event to whoever manages the camera program, right? Had to be recorded in order to have what happened before the event. You know, you get a drag off the cigarette. So... That thing's always recording. Plus, there's been, and you can look it up on YouTube, there's been a few drivers that claim to have been terminated for things that happened when they were parked. I think one driver, his wife came out, and she stayed the night with him. They didn't leave and go anywhere, but he was close to home, and uh, she came out and stayed the night with him, and the company fired him for having an unauthorized passenger. You know, so that camera is always recording, regardless. Here's the thing. Here, here's the other half truth to that. That camera facing a driver, it's it's not there to stop, in my opinion. It's not there to stop drivers from doing things they shouldn't do. It's there to protect the company. Because when accidents happen, and if you're with a company, they're going to happen. They happen from time to time. When accidents happen... They can use that driver facing camera to limit their financial responsibility on that accident. And you might be wondering what I'm saying or, or how, how that works. All right. So let's say you get in an accident. Let's say right before your accident, someone called, you glance over at your phone to see who it is. And then you go back to the road. You don't answer it. You don't touch it. Nothing. You just glanced at your phone, seeing who called. You'll call them back later, right? Uh, three seconds later, car swerves over into your lane, hits his brakes, you smash him. All right. They're going, you know, they're going to use the fact that you're distracted. 
the company's going to say, well, the driver was distracted. We're not financially responsible for that. We can't control the driver. And we have proof that the driver was distracted. Here's, here's the proof they're going to give them that, that footage. But you're looking over at your phone as someone calling. It, it's, that's all it's there for. Not saying the company still won't pay out in a lawsuit. They're still going to pay out. But it's going to greatly reduce the amount of money they pay out on a lawsuit. Um, it's been several years but five or six years ago, I sat on a driver board. And at that time, the average cost of a uh, accident in the trucking industry was $4 million. That's what they figured at that time. The average cost was $4 million. It's probably much higher now. You pass billboards, man, you see people getting $10 million, $8 million, $12 million, you know, because these lawyers advertise their, uh, their settlements out, you know, what they've won in court, like, casinos advertise what they're paying out. I mean, it's kind of crazy. But these trucking companies needed a way to lower that. That's the way they lower it. Still going to pay out, but it limits their liability. If they can prove that the driver was doing anything that they weren't supposed to do, the company can throw their hands in there and say, hey, we tell these drivers not to do that. Here's the paperwork from orientation or safety class or whatever. And uh, he chose to do it anyway. We cannot control that, you know, yada, yada, yada. So then more of the financial responsibility falls on the driver. You as a driver can be sued as well. And you may say, well, I ain't got nothing to take. Well, he may not, but you'll still lose a lawsuit. They can still do wage garnishments and you'll be paying out for however long it takes to pay out whatever it is you lose in that settlement. You could also lose you know, material things, you know, land or a couple of vehicles, you know, there's, there's all kinds of things that can happen from a lawsuit. So you really want to try to avoid being faced with that dilemma. But I just thought guys should think about that when you're going to work for these companies and they have driver facing cameras, something it always tells me is that company doesn't have me in mind. They're not concerned with me at all. They're only concerned with themselves. And they're proving that by having the driver facing camera because they have that driver facing camera so that if anything happens, they can do their best to put it all on me as a driver, try to alleviate themselves. Hey, it's business. It's the way it goes, right? You know, but it's just something to keep in mind, especially if you're really loyal to one of these companies that, that does that, you know, keep in mind that it may not, (laughs) it ain't necessarily there for your own, for your own good and well being. Well, let's get on to the next topic. Oh, Bobby Reach, man. I've been watching Bobby Reach for, I don't know, four months, five months. I think he's been around a lot longer than that. Been around a couple years. Dang, they're shaking the hell out of their trailer. Like they're having a race back there running running up in it. But uh, anyway, he's, he's, he's kind of an unusual cat. He's a good guy, but he's kind of an unusual cat. You know, he, he, he does things that are just kind of strange, but at the same time, I think it's genius, especially if you have a YouTube channel, it's genius. You start controversy, you know, uh, like, you know, like this guy trucks used to do, he kind of would say things that he knew the whole community would, every trucker out there would, would throw fit about, but it helped him because it brought him a lot of comments, brought him a lot of, uh, a lot of people that were hate watching, you know, hate watching or regular watching either way. It's still a view, right? Bobby reach kind of runs a channel similar. It's kind of similar to that. Uh, not exactly the same though. A lot of times it's not what he's saying. It's what he does. He just does some stuff. That's like, why did you do that? You know, why, why, why did you do that? You know, he's got some videos out there that are just crazy. There's a lot of uh, videos about Bobby Reach exposed and Bobby Reach this and Bobby Reach that. A lot of uh, a lot of other YouTubers don't care for him, and and I understand. I mean, he's he's grown. He grew pretty fast. I do believe he used the trucking community to grow his channel because you can jump in trucking and vlog, and you can jump a couple thousand subscribers fairly quickly, a year or two. You know. Uh, whereas if you're vlogging at home, gardening or 
doing something like that, it can take a whole lot longer to build. So I guess Bobby Reed's seen that. So he went to school to be a truck driver, became a truck driver. And I believe he admitted that he, uh, he did it just to grow his channel. That, that was his ultimate goal. And he's kind of stepped out of trucking. I think he's moved off into brokerage, but, uh, I mean, he, he's pretty popular. He's a pretty popular cat, but the reason he, the reason I'm mentioning him is because he got me this morning. I was going through looking at videos. I was watching a little bit of trucking answers, catching up on some of these other guys that I watch. Uh, looking at Gentry and Sons, which, by the way, he's in the hospital. Uh, prayers go out to uh, Gentry and Sons trucking, but I think he's been cleared of a heart attack or stroke. They're still trying to figure out what's wrong, you know, and hopefully it's nothing major. Uh, I know some some of you out there don't like him, and if y'all don't, I mean, I understand, but still don't want nothing bad to happen to anybody like that. I mean, that's just, I wouldn't want, wouldn't want nothing like that to happen to anybody, even if I didn't like him. But uh, he anyway, Bobby Reach kind of got me this morning with a clickbait. I'm quitting YouTube. And he hadn't posted in a month, so I was like, oh, crap. Did he really quit YouTube? You know, what's going on? You know, and I'm not going to ruin it for you guys that haven't seen it. Y'all go watch it. Uh, I will say it's the title doesn't match what what's happening. You know what I'm saying? But I, I just, he got me. So it put, put it on my mind. Asian Mai is normally the one that gets me with clickbait. Asian Mai, man, that, that dude is an expert at, uh, at, a putting together a title and a thumbnail. I mean, he is absolutely an expert. Asian Maya works hard. He has the hardest work ethic of anybody on YouTube. But I got to say, he is an expert at uh, putting that title together just right towards just interesting enough you want to click on it and see what's going on, you know. And he puts a lot of good information out. You know, it's, it's and he gets it quickly. I don't know how he gets it so quickly. Uh, I've seen him come out with information on news or something like that. And I won't hear about it till later that evening. And I'm subscribed to freight waves and uh, CDL life and a few of these others. And I, I won't hear about it till way later. So it's crazy. It's just crazy how fast uh, Asian mind can come out with that. But anyway, if you haven't seen the Bobby rich, Bobby reach, I'm quitting YouTube video. You should go check it out. I think it's got three or 4,000 views on it now. Um, and if you haven't watched some of the Bobby Reach videos, you should go back and watch some of them because some of them videos are just crazy. I mean, they're uh, they're out there, but they're really interesting. He knew what he was doing with YouTube. I got to give him that. He knew what he was doing with YouTube. And I fully expect him to grow well beyond where he's at now if he continues. But anyway, I hope all y'all out there are doing great, staying safe, staying out of trouble. Uh, being good to one another. Remember, we are all family, even if we are very much dysfunctional. You know, uh, I know there's another cold front working across the country. It's going to be a long, cold winter. The Farmer's Almanac said the Midwest is supposed to be the worst this year. Uh, I believe so. another YouTuber was saying that in 2015, the Midwest was really bad. I don't remember. I remember, I think, 2010, 20, 2009 or 2010 being pretty rough. But when we have a rough winter in trucking, we have a rough winter in trucking. Uh, trucking winters in trucking can en end a lot of careers. So get prepared for that. Get get your uh, hand warmers out, your feet warmers out, and get prepared for what's coming. Y'all take care. Stay safe. I appreciate all of y'all for stopping by, and keep trucking.